Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well tonight we're gonna go ahead, we're not gonna put together a kit. We aren't gonna do any scenery or anything like that. But we're gonna go ahead and scratch build something. Yeah, we're gonna do a scratch build. Haven't done one of those in a while, it'd be fun. Now. If you've been in slots or something like that, or if you've done scenery or modeling, after a while you start to accumulate a bunch of bits. And what I mean by that is you start getting a bunch of balsa, you know, styrene, all these different things, right? And like I've got here, I've got a whole entire box of all this miscellaneous balsa that's just laying around. Well, what we're gonna do tonight is going to go ahead and and kind of help out with that. We're going to we're going to thin out a little bit of all those little bits and pieces. And if you don't have that, the material list for this is very minimal. So, it's going to be kind of a fun thing to build. Now, when I first started, well, you know what? Let me show you guys exactly what we're going to build, right? So, I have this video up and what this was was a scaffolding that I built and the whole entire video went through, showed you guys how to build a scaffolding. And then at the end shot, I had this camera and this little guy on top. And there was a lot of questions as far as where did that come from? Well, the camera, I went ahead and scratch built from just bits and pieces of balsa. And it, it was a fun thing to build. Now, that was quite a while ago. Now, just recently here on the Patreon page, we do builds and stuff like that. And we, uh, they took a boat and decided that we wanted to build ourselves a little camera. So here is the little camera that we built. And I'll just go ahead and put it up right there. And it, it's really cool. I mean, you know, it, it's neat. And then the idea also is that you scratch build it yourself, which you know, kind of adds to the whole entire neatness of it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to build one of these. Now, it's kind of cool. And like I said, the material list is very minimal and everything else. So it's, it's, it's easy to do. And a good chance, if, like I said, if you've been doing scenery or stuff like that, you probably have a lot of this stuff laying around in a box somewhere. So Go ahead and get your box out of all your different bits and whatnot, and uh, we'll go ahead and build this thing up, all right? So that sounds like a plan. Now, <laughs> another thing on top of that. If you notice, I've got myself a new t-shirt on. Yes, a new t-shirt that is available through Conquest Lair. These guys right here. So has this in the front, but on the back, yes, a little bit different. <laughs> And it's to keep it in the slot. And there's the t-shirt right there. And there's Conquest Lair. So there's also that that's coming. And one other thing, guys. One other thing. It's about time we get ourselves our own cup for coffee. Our own mug. So what we got here is a Boone Slot Car Garage mug. And it gets better. On the back side of it says let's do this and you know it just kind of makes my coffee taste better too so yeah right <laughs> so saying all that let's go ahead and let's grab ourselves a donut and uh yeah in a cup of joe and uh let's do this hmm that is good Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's get through the materials that we're gonna need for this build, all right? So first thing that we need is some quarter inch square balsa dowel. Now, this has been painted uh, white. And like I said, there's a bunch of different little bits and pieces I have laying around. <laughs> this is one of them. So you need some quarter inch square balsa dowel. 
okay? There's also these little guys, which are, um, oh shoot, <laughs> they're cotton swabs, but they're, they're the ones on the wood, you know, wood handled cotton swabs. If you don't have these, you can also use toothpicks or you could actually use shish kebab stick. So if you have some shish kebab sticks or something along those lines, it'll work. Now, so we have that, whoop, I dropped it. And you'll notice I have two pieces of bigger balsa down here. This is half inch by half inch balsa, okay? Now, you can use this. In fact, that's the way that I built my last one is by, by doing with this way. Or, you just, just wanna throw this out there. You can use this or easier would be this. And what this is, is half inch by, what is it, three eighths balsa, okay? So it's a little bit more of a rectangle type of shape. Now, you can use, like I said, you can use this stuff, which is the half inch by half inch, but you'll have to do some shaving and stuff on it to get the, the silhouette down a little bit skinnier. So, I just wanna put that out there, guys. So there's that, okay? Also, I have some really light gauge aluminum wire. You can use tie wire or, or whatever. This is um, 18 gauge aluminum wire. So we need some of that. And then you'll notice I have a abundance of pins over here. Now, this is the one thing that gets a little bit tricky. You might have to go hunting around the house for this portion of it. And what it is, is if we look at our camera here, okay? You can see where the wire's at and stuff like that. And there's a little bit wire there and you can see where the shish kebab sticks or the, the toothpicks are used at. But if you look at the lens, the camera lens, see it's tapered, okay? It's tapered, it's not straight or anything else. So what we're going after is something in the house <laughs> or laying around the garage that has a tapered look to it. So if you notice pins, like ballpoint pins, okay? If you take the tip off of this, see how the end of this is? See how it's tapered? So if we take this apart, which this one, let's see here, goes here. Ah, we won't worry about it. <laughs> but you can see how it's tapered. This would work for, you know, for a, let me get that into adjustment. Come on, pin. But this would work for a camera lens, okay? So there's that idea. Or if you had something like this, just a regular push ballpoint, the end of that, if you cut it up in here, would give you the same type of shape. Or if you have a mechanical pencil, you have the end portion right here that you can take off, okay? Whoop, there you go. Right here, and you could use that for a lens as well. Or, I'm just kind of throwing out different ideas. This is what I'm using, which is a sealer tip, which I have to chop all down to make work, but I have a few of these laying around. These were 3D printed. So, you know, you can see that shape right in there. And last but not least, if you have a tube of caulking, right? Or you need to do some caulking around the house, the ends of these would work perfect because they come to that tapered shape. So just kind of throwing a bunch of different ideas out here on what you could use for the end portion of this because that is the only part of this that you might have to get creative in and figure out exactly where you are going to find one of those so there's that the other thing that we have are some just little finish nails these are little brads okay just little guys and you want something with a head on it so that we can create our lights down here, our buttons, plus we need those finished nails to go ahead and create our handles, okay? So we come back, let me go through the tools that we're gonna need for this ordeal. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's get in the toolbox, let's get some tools out and I'll show you guys exactly what we need. So, <laughs> I've got them laid out here. Like I said, real easy. Material list is real easy. Tools are real easy too. So what we have is just like a razor knife to go ahead and cut your balsa and different things. Um, 
a ruler, okay? We need some type of measurement tool. We need some super glue to get this stuff to stick together. So I have some Gorilla Glue, the gel, and I do have some accelerant too. So a lot of times with super glue and balsa, it bonds, bam, just like that. But a lot of times when you're using something other than balsa, like our shish kebab sticks or toothpicks or something like that, is sometimes they need a little bit of help to go ahead and bond. So that's where our accelerant can really help you out there instead of having to hold it, you know, for all that time. So there's that. The other thing that we need, it went through that. We got our dikes, we got our needle nose pliers. Okay, we have two different grits of sandpaper. I have a 100 grit and I have a 220 grit, okay? Now, <clears throat> so with the 100 grit, I mean, you could use, you could already go all the way down to like 80. It's just, you gotta remember balsa is real soft. So if you are sanding on it with an aggressive paper, it's gonna sand extremely fast. So just kind of keep that in mind when you are starting to shape this. Uh, the other thing that we need are our paints. So I have some black and red and blue and yellow, green, and I have a silver, and those are all acrylic, okay? And again, you can't finger paint, so we need some brushes too. So I have a fine tip brush, and I have something a little bit more broad as well. So there is that, and I am dropping stuff today. So <laughs> there is all that, and I think we're set. So now what we need to do is go ahead and get our little bits out and let's start building this camera. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is go ahead and we're gonna cut the body of the camera, okay? So here's the body of the camera right there. Now, like I said, you could use the, the half inch by half inch dowel or you could use this 3 8 by half inch, okay? So I'm gonna use the 3 8 by half inch. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at one inch, okay? So one inch, or you can do this and you can cut it roughly at like four and a half centimeters, okay? So four and a half centimeters, go ahead and scar it, and then we just need to cut this portion off. Now, I do have my razor knife and go through. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and I have myself a little tiny hacksaw. If you have one of these, Go ahead and use it. <laughs> they're they're nice. It makes it it makes it real easy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut this through. So let me get this real quick. So there we go. All right. So now I have the body of the camera right here. Right. So let me go ahead and dress up these corners a little bit with some sandpaper. Just go ahead and dress them up. And we come back, we'll take it to the next step. All right, so now we're ready for the next step. So I have my little piece here of the half inch by three eighths balsa. And I went ahead and uh, cut, and then I went ahead and just dressed up the sides to get rid of the splinters. I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side. So there it is, it's over there, it's off to the side. <laughs> so next step, we need to go ahead and find our quarter inch square dowel. Now this, we're gonna cut two of them, okay? Two of them at a half inch. So a half inch, or if we go off of, uh, let's see here. Let's see, okay, half inch, or roughly around maybe two and a half centimeters. Yeah, two and a half centimeters or half inch. So let me go ahead and I'll mark that out. Kind of hard working around a camera. But okay, so I got that marked. I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and mark it again, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut these two pieces off. When we come back, I'll show you what we need to do with these. Okay, so I'm back. I have my two little pieces of quarter inch dowel here, all cut to half inch. Now. Let me go ahead and grab this camera so I can explain this. Now, if then I'll grab my, yes, our magical little pointer. So if we look at the camera, we have the body cut, which is this piece, all right, or half inch. Now, 
these two quarter pieces are the upper lens, or the viewer, I should say, the viewer side up in here. And the other one is for down below where our legs are connect to. So this is the, the lower, I don't know what you want to call that. It's the mounting for the tripod. There we go, that sounds good. Mounting for the tripod area. <laughs> so those are what those two pieces are for. Now, if you notice on the lower one, I have it back cut just a little bit, okay? Just kind of makes it look pretty good. Now, you could keep this square if you wanted to on the lower. You could keep that square or just go ahead and form it and just give it a light cut back. So just a light angle. All right, so that's what I'm going to do with one of these. The other one, which is up on top here, if you can see that, you can see how this is all contoured, all right, like so. So that's what the other one is going to be, you know, shaped into. So what I'm going to do off of this to start out with is I'm going to go ahead and back cut this lower so I can get this mounted up in there. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this lightly, and then I'm gonna take some super glue, and I will go ahead and super glue this to the bottom of the half inch by three quarter inch piece of balsa. So when I come back, I'll have that on there, and then what I'll do is we'll go ahead and glue this other one on together, and I'll show you exactly as far as placement goes on that, things to keep in mind. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. Okay, see, that didn't take too long. I'm back again. <laughs> so here we go. I went ahead and I got this glued on. And you can see that cut just had a slight angle that I went ahead and put on that, all right? So it gives plenty of room down here to go ahead and mount my legs. And it gives a little bit more of an optical, you know, just looks make it look better with just a little bit of a back cut on that. You also notice that I did not come to the very end of the half inch. It's slightly recessed in, just, just a tad, just so it has a little bit, if I put my hand in behind here, you might be able to see it better. Just a little bit of a notch back there, okay? So you go ahead and get that super glued in, dries real quick. Now, the upper, <clears throat> let's go back to our camera. So if we go back to our camera, we can see how this is kind of mounted here, but you see how it's hanging off. Again, I'll use my, my hand back here. It's dirty, sorry guys. But you can see on the backside where it's lightly hanging off the end, down at the bottom, and also you have this flare to it, okay? The viewer has a flare so that the guy standing there, if we look at the other one, he's standing there, you can see into it, right? So what we need to do with this one is we're gonna go ahead and glue it up here and we're just gonna go ahead and put it back just a little bit, okay? See how that is? Just back there, just a wee bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one on. We come back, I'll show you how I shape that. Okay, so here we are. I went ahead and I have that glued on. See how far I have that stepped off? A little ways, I actually went about halfway, so about a quarter inch, I have hanging off the end of this half inch piece. Now, next thing we wanna do is you see how this guy and how it has a contour to it and then it's back cut right in there. So what I wanna do is take my razor knife and I'm gonna go ahead and shave this upper, okay? So first off, I wanna shave it down. The cool thing about balsa is it shapes real easy. So we're just gonna go ahead and shape this down. Okay. And try to keep that straight. Okay. So there we go. I went ahead and shaved that down. Now, this is where our 100 grit paper comes in and our 120. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just tear off a piece of this. Or, there we go. I've got my trusted scissors. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with the, the 
scissors, throw that over there, throw the scissors. Okay, now I got my 100 grit paper. So go ahead and fold this up. All right, so now I've got to fold it up. I got a nice clean edge down here at the bottom. All right, the idea is that we want to go ahead and create this viewer, right? So this kind of goes into your artistic, however you want to make this look. You can see up on top, I went ahead and kind of flared the top of this over. I gave it a little bit of a step here, okay? So, kind of, you know, just use your artistic um, judgment and, and make it the best way that you want to make it. So, I'm just going to go ahead and shade this down so I can get the upper shape done first, okay? And you might want to take a look at some other cameras and see how they look as well. This camera is kind of, it, it's, uh, I, I'd say I, I went ahead and I based it off of the stuff that I grew up watching as far as, you know, like on wide roll of sports and stuff like that. And they had kind of these big bulky cameras, right? Um, the new ones are a little bit, I mean, they're more streamlined than what these things were. But that's kind of where this, this one comes, uh, was based out of. Now, as far as our viewer, I'm just going to go ahead and take my time. And I'm just going to shape this down a little bit. But I'll get it started and kind of give you guys an idea of how to do this. So it's kind of, it's tedious, I know, but this is part of scratch building sometimes is all these little intricate things that you got to do. So big thing with this though is when you, when you are sanding it, make sure that your sandpaper has a nice hard edge. So you can go ahead and use that to get those clean, clean cuts to it. All right. So just a little bit of shaving like so. And I want to knock this down a little bit more down at the bottom. All right. So there, it's pretty much roughed in. I got a little bit more to do, but you can see how... The upper has a little bit of a smoothness to it, kind of comes over the top. And now I have that flat area in there as far as the viewer. Got a little bit more kind of finessing to do on it, but you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with this a little bit more. When we come back, we'll take this camera to the next step. Okay, so here we are. Now I went ahead and I have my viewer all kind of shape there. Went ahead and kissed the edges here just a little bit just to kind of soften them up a tad. Now, if we look at this, it's all nice and square, right? All square. <laughs> and if, let's go ahead and let's go back a little bit. If you're using the half inch by half inch and you had this piece of balsa up on top, you can see that there would be quite a bit of space there right? So there's, because it's obviously, it's thicker, it's fatter. Now, even though I'm using the skinnier stuff, which is three eighths by half inch, I want to go ahead and give this thing a little bit of contour, all right? I, I'm not, I'm not wanting to give it just, you know, a flat sides and stuff like that. If we look at this camera, and it's kind of hard to see, but the actual body of the camera has a little bit of a roll to it, all right? It's not straight up and down. It has a little bit of a roll. Just, you know, just kind of gives it a little, I, you know, I think it gives it just a little bit of a, a good look, kind of a realistic look that the camera has a little bit of a, has the body to it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my 100 grit and I'm just going to go ahead and start shaping this just a little bit. I'm going to, and you notice I'm, I'm hitting this upper side, but I'm hitting it in such a way where I'm going to kind of create a flare to the sides. Okay. So just by lightly hitting it like so, I can go ahead and already kind of give that optical illusion that it has kind of a, an oval shape to it. 
So I'm going to do the, the same thing on the lower. Okay. And if you're using the half inch, obviously you have a lot more room to work with. You can get a lot more creative with the actual body of the camera. If you're using this, you know, this thinner stuff, just kind of take your time, kind of look at it. Don't want to go too far. I mean, it's not the hardest thing to build. So if you did kind of go, oops, and had one of those moments, it wouldn't take you too long to get right back to the situation you are right here. But I'll just show you this real quick. So if we got this side and lightly hitting it like so, kind of softens the edge. See that? So if I go over to the other side, you can see how sharp it is. So just by lightly kissing that on the upper and lower gives kind of, you know, it takes away from the idea that it's a, a block of, of wood <laughs> and it kind of gives the illusion that it has shape to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the side. I am not going to hit the front per se. Okay. I'm not going to hit this side as far as the front or the rear. Okay, I am going to dress it up as far as coming across here and just kind of, I want to dress that up a little bit. It's a little bit rough as far as the grain that's in there. So I want to smooth that out a little bit, but I want to keep the sharpness on those sides. So we come back, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we're back and I went ahead and I shaped the body of it. So you can see how it's kind of rounded out a little bit. If I look at the front. See how it's a little bit of rounded edges, just kind of softens it a little bit, right? So now we have that. We have the upper as far as the lens or the, the viewer. We have the base for the tripod. The body's all done. Now we need to do is go ahead and find that piece that you're going to use for the lens, okay? Like I said, this piece right here is something that was 3D printed that, um, in fact, it, it wasn't even what... I was thinking of when when I did print this okay um, so what we're using this for is to put this on the end okay now I'm gonna make this camera kind of a real large like telephoto lens you know something that's really gonna have a lot of zooming power <laughs> on this now if you obviously this is kind of a unique piece I understand that so if you have like a mechanical pencil let me just go ahead and show you this real quick. So if I take this off, right, it actually has a piece of lead in there. Let me go and pull that out. But if you look at this, it's real close to, to what I have. In fact, it, it has a smaller opening there as well, okay? In fact, I kind of like this, but I still got lead for that pencil, so I'm not ready to sacrifice it yet. But if you're going to use one of these, you know, you could go ahead and push this in, okay, and find that area, that sweet spot that you want to have to go ahead and, and use this. Oops, I pushed that. Hang on a sec. Let me make sure I don't mess up this thing. All right, to find that sweet spot where it's going to look good, okay? So if you need to trim that down... You know, use a little hacksaw, maybe a, a blade or, or whatnot. Go ahead and trim that down. Take your sandpaper, dress up the edge, and you'll have your lens. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this back together so I don't lose it. And then throw that over there. But this is what I'm going to use, okay? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue this onto the end. Now, if you notice on this camera right here, it's up. All right, I don't have it in the middle, I have it towards the top. And if you actually look at the, the cameras, a lot of times they weren't down here, you know, they are more, you know, kind of mid or a little bit higher as far as that goes, okay? So I guess you could put it down there, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it up just a little bit up here on top, right? And then once you get it on like that, it looks like an old Buck Rogers ray gun. <laughs> There it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this together before I lose these pieces. And uh, yeah, when we come back, we'll take it to the next step. Okay, so I'm back and I have my lens 
glued onto the end. So kind of cool looking. Now, if you notice also, I went ahead and put one of the legs in. Now, the reason why I did that, A, is to kind of show you, you know, that how it glued in, but you can see kind of the angle that I have towards the back. Now, I cut out three of these, okay? Three legs for the tripod, like this guy. In these guys, let me go ahead and grab this, is sitting at roughly, let me measure this, about an inch and a quarter. So in centimeters, that would be about six and a quarter centimeters, okay? So I have three legs that I went ahead and cut off, and I used this, which is the wood, you know, cotton swab. Now, the reason why I did that is I kind of like the diameter. It's a little bit smaller. I don't know what this diameter would be in doweling. Um, you know, it's small stuff. I would say probably about one eighth inch dowel would be my guess. It's, you know, it's, it's fairly, fairly small. So the reason that I went ahead and glued the back one first, okay, there's, there's some, there's, there's a reason behind my madness here. One is, A, it's a lot easier because you have the one down here at the bottom and you can go ahead and set it in there and get that one set. So the other two are gonna be a little bit easier to go ahead and to space it off of, based off of your back leg. Now, if you also notice, let's get my razor knife here. I'll bring this up, try to keep it in focus. Um, I went ahead, oh, you can't see them right here there you go okay so there's two little dots i put in here and what i did is i took my razor knife and just kind of piloted a hole on both of those so that i have something to go off of as far as spacing goes all right just a little bit of a help but what i'm going to do is go ahead and get this glued in and i'm trying to try to match as far as the the way that it goes apart there, right? This is a tricky part. If I could come up with an easier way of doing that, which I'm sure someone out there is gonna say, Boone, why didn't you do this? And it's gonna be a great idea. <clears throat> a lot of times that happens in comments. I'll make a video and then all of a sudden, I mean, put it out there and the guys in the slot car community will come up with another way of doing it. And it's a really good way of doing it. So. This might be one of those things, so who knows? But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and glue this in, and I've got a rooster in the background, but <laughs> hopefully you can hear me. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue this in with a little bit of super glue. And this also is a good time that you can use your accelerator. But, so just go ahead and put this in like so, just a little tap there right in that one area. And then I will draw this down through and I'll try to get it so it looks copacetic. Now, I have these a little bit long, okay? The reason why I have them a little bit long is because of the figure that you're going to use, okay? I don't know what kind of figure you're going to use. A lot of times, 132nd figures, they vary in size. So, uh, being as such that the legs are a little bit long, when you find that figure, that perfect little figure that you're going to put behind your camera, you can then go, well, it looks like it's kind of tried. You can then go and adjust these legs so that when you have it down, that figure will match up on the back side. So you kind of see like with that guy. Okay. So <clears throat> I got the one leg here. Now I just got to go ahead and glue on this other guy. And now that I have him set, I can go in and glue him and try to get the, the right look. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we come back. The camera portion is pretty much done except for paint. All right, so we're back. I have my legs. For the tripod and it's all set now if you set this down especially with this guy since it has a very large lens on it it's not going to want to stand up okay and don't feel bad because mine won't stand up either 
right? It just won't stand up. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make this little battery box for it, right? And if you notice, this camera there used to do the same thing that did, okay? So if you have a camera, won't stand up, no worries, we have a fix for that. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to build this battery box, okay? So what we're going to do is go back to our balsa. And since I was using the uh, half inch by three or three eighths, I'm going to go ahead and use that again. I'm going to go ahead and measure this out at one inch, okay? So it's going to be at one inch or four and a half centimeters, Okay, so let me just go ahead and scribe this. Let me see my razor knife. So I'm gonna go ahead and right here, that's four and a quarter centimeters. So now I have this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut off that little piece. We'll be right back. I'll have that loose. All right, so here it is. There's that little block. And I went ahead and dressed it up a little bit, just kind of get rid of some of the frame. But you notice I did not round the edges or anything else. I'm leaving them nice and sharp because this is going to be a little battery box. So this guy, I'm just going to go ahead and set him down. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and grab your wire. Right? So I'm sorry, I just hit the camera. But let's see here. Where is the end of my wire? Where did I put it? I got all this wire out here. There, there's the end of my wire. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spool this out, all right? And I'm just gonna do, you know, fairly long length. And the reason why I'm not really measuring this is, well, for one thing, I'll measure it. What the heck, I'll measure it. So, I am actually going to cut around five inches, okay? Five inches of wire, roughly. So, let's see here. I'll just go right to there. Cut that off. Okay, get rid of that. And we have our piece of wire. Now, what this is going to be is the cable that is going to connect our camera to the box. See that red cable right there? So you see it's all kind of wound up. So now what we need to do is go ahead and grab either your shish kebab stick. You could even, you could add, okay. Since we have, say you, you could only find one stick, right? And when you got all done with it, it was teeny tiny like this guy. <laughs> You're like, I don't have any. Okay, no problem. You have your paintbrush, right? So if you take your paintbrush and the thing on the paintbrush, I'll start over here, and we're just going to wind this around, okay? We're going to spool it. So there we go. We got it all spooled together. Go ahead and take that off. Now we have our cable for, that's going to go between our camera and the box. Cool thing about this little guy is that this box is gonna give your camera that balance point, secure, secure it, so it's not gonna do that anymore, all right? So this little box right here on the end is gonna help it stand up. And it does that because we're gonna connect it with wire. Now, what I'm gonna do now with this wire is that I'm gonna go ahead and paint it, and I'm gonna use an acrylic on it, and I kinda like the red, so I'm gonna paint this wire red, okay? So I'm just gonna take my acrylic paint and paint this wire, okay? So when I come back, our wire will be painted red. And, and before we, because it'd be kind of ludicrous for me to, okay, we won't go there. All right, so I'm gonna paint my, paint, blah, 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 I can't talk. I'm gonna paint my wire red and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the box, and I'm gonna paint my camera black, okay? So I'm gonna paint these black, paint my wire red, all right? All with acrylic, all right.
When I come back, we'll have a black camera, black box, red wire. Okay, so I'm back and <laughs> I've got a red wire, black camera, and a black box. <laughs> so here we go. Now, the next thing we want to go ahead and do is you have those little finish nails or little brads. And let me go ahead and grab this guy. So it's, you know, it's fairly little long guy, but if you notice the big key thing, not only is, you know, they have a little bit of length to it. I believe this is about an inch long. Let me grab my ruler just to make sure. And it is what? Eh, it's about three quarters of an inch. Okay. So not too long, just a little guy. And it doesn't matter. It could be longer than that. You could trim it down just however you want to make it work. Key thing with these is that you want to have a little bit of a nub at the end of it. See the nail head? Okay, that's what we're going after is this nail head. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this as the controls to the camera in the back side. So, what we want to do is find out as far as the spacing goes, but these are going to be the two handles off the back. You can see it on this one, the two little handles. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of super glue, and then I'm just going to go ahead and push this guy in and find the right length that I want as far as my handles to be. All right, so there's that. The other thing is, he's not going to stand. If you notice, I've got a bunch of these little guys, okay? And what these are, are little nubs of finish nails that I've went ahead and cut just the tips off of. And I didn't actually cut these for this project. I just, I hang on to them. When I make my guardrail, I'll cut the tops off sometimes so I can set the nail down inside the balsa. So when the nail's out and you set it into the, the polystyrene. But these are kind of cool because if you're using it for like if you're building a kit with a door or something along those lines, they work really cool as a little door handle, right? It's kind of a doorknob. So that was my main thought when I first started to grab these. Well, they also can be used in this project. And what I mean by that is let me go ahead and grab this camera. And if you see the little blue and the red and the green and the yellow, those little guys right there, the little lights that we have here, well, those are these little nail heads, okay? And they're cut off, so you want to make sure you, you have some dikes so you can cut the nail off. But what we're going to do with these is go ahead and just put a little super glue on them, push them down to where we want them, let them dry, and we can come back and paint them up to make them look like little lights that are on our, our camera and on our box. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And when we come back, we'll connect the wire. And then we just need to finish it off with just a couple other little trinkets. And our project will be complete. All right. So I have my handles in. I have two little nail heads right in there and a good way of doing those little nail heads is that if you have one of your nails go ahead and make some pilot holes in the balsa because it's really soft and then just take a little dab of super glue put on the end of it and just push it into that hole and there you go okay so looks pretty cool then the other thing is on the end of our box i went ahead and put four into the end of my box now this is the smaller you know it's the three eighths by half inch. This being that I was able to use half inch by half inch square, I could fit more lights into it. This one, not so much. So I went ahead and improvised, just went with four. Now at this point, what we want to do, and it's not going to stand up, is we go ahead and take our different colors of acrylic and we can go ahead and paint the end of those nubs and you can paint a little bit of blue up here in the viewer paint your handles out and get it all to that point the other thing is if you notice 
this camera has a bunch of silver highlights. So what you can do is come around onto your box and take the silver paint. You can take a nail, you can take a toothpick or whatever, and I'll take this silver acrylic and we'll just use a nail head. How's that since it's right here? And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and dip it in there like so, so it's small. And then we can come in and create our rivets on top, okay? So real, real easy to do. And being that it's black with a silver base, it shows up really fast. So a little bit of detail work to get that all done. So what we're gonna do is I'll go ahead Get that painting all done. Well, actually, you know what? It's one thing we're going to do before we do that. All right. So we have this. Let me put away this silver. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's go back to our wire. So we have our wire here. Let's clip off a little chunk of it. All right. So we have a little chunk. It's probably about an inch long. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle nose pliers. And we'll go ahead and put a 90 degree angle on these. Okay, so up like so. Take it down. And what we're building right here is a handle to go on top of the box. So kind of use your best judgment as far as how big of a handle that you want. Here's my little handle right here. And just kind of give you an idea of how big my handle is as far as the... Uh, the bend that's on it is right around three, uh, three quarters of a centimeter. Or if we convert that into inches, it's roughly, roughly about a quarter inch. Okay. Is what that little bend is. Now it's kind of hanging off the end here. So I want to trim that up. So I make it a little bit shorter just so it's easier to, to work with. And then again, we'll take our super glue, which is right there. So we get our super glue, put a little dab on the end of this, just, just a kiss, okay? Doesn't need to be that much. And then we'll grab the top of our box and we'll find the center Somehow, we're going to eyeball this, and we'll go ahead and set our handle into our balsa. So once you find the area that you like, just go ahead and press it down in there, and there we go. We've got ourselves a grab handle on our battery box right there. Okay, so now that we got this all ready to go, actually sitting up a little bit high. So let me just push it down a little bit further. There we go, I like that better. Okay, so now we have our handle in there like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead, do all my rivet work with the silver. I'm gonna paint my little nubs. When we come back, we'll hook up our wire and uh, we'll see what this project looks like. And there it is. So I went ahead and I have the wire all connected, did a little bit of trim work around the lens, and yeah, but you see the, the little nail heads with a little bit of paint on it, and it just gives it that little extra detail. But as far as the wire, wire's real easy. Same way that you put in the nail heads, just to have a little bit of super glue onto it, then push the end of the wire into the balsa, and it just pushes right in. And then once the wire is set on there, it actually, camera doesn't fall over now. So you can adjust the wire and stuff and get it so it's all sitting there like, like it's supposed to be. Now, there are, well, there's one other thing you could do to this if you wanted to. And like if you see on this, it has the old Wide World of Sports logo on the side of it. So you could go ahead to your computer, find one of the old logos of, of uh, like Wide World of Sports, maybe Sky News or whatever, 
size it all down and then print it out. And then you could go ahead and put that on the side of the body of it. And that's one extra thing you could do with the camera. There is one other thing. And this is something I've been thinking of now that I've seen these other little cameras in existence. And the way technology is going today, which is really cool with, with electronics, is they make micro cameras, right? So just think of this. You could take this little camera, this little guy right here, and you can make it functional, you know? You could take one of those micro cameras, set it down into this lens down inside so it's projecting out. You could take a, a drill bit, real slight drill bit, drill it at an angle down like so across so that the wire drops out down below and then wire this in, drop the wire down, spool it into your, your wire that you have here so it doesn't look out of place, it would just be spooled in with it. Bring it down into the box, drill another hole down like this, drop the wire down, wire it into your layout, as far as I don't know how those things wire up, but you could actually make this camera functional. How cool would that be? I mean, you could set this down on a corner or something like that. I'm not sure how those actually little cameras work, but you know, it would be really cool. I mean, how cool would that be? You actually have a camera that you built that works. That's a real camera. So just kind of something I want to throw out there. I'd love to see one of you guys go ahead and take this and just put a spin on it that takes it to the next level. And I believe one of those little cameras would be the way to do it. You know, talking about it, I really need to get myself one of those and try it out. But here we go. We got ourselves a cool little addition for the layout. So, I mean, just think, you go ahead and you skip this all down, you set it on like a, a corner or you set it on a building. Maybe you build the scaffold and you put the camera up there with a guy on it, but it's just a cool little accessory that you can put on to your scenery that just adds that much more, you know, that much more coolness to it, right? So there we go, little camera, and uh, fun to make, cool little project, doesn't use much material whatsoever. A lot of times it's just material you have laying around inside the, the garage or wherever you have your track at that you do your modeling at, and you can make yourself a little camera. So there we go. So I'd say this video is a wrap, right? So. We come back, let's go ahead and wrap this all up and uh, you guys can go ahead and make yourself a camera. So there we go, another video done, and we built something pretty cool. Yep, a little camera. It's kind of cool, right? It's real simple to build. It has a minimal amount of material, minimal amount of tools, and it's just kind of a neat accessory that you can use in your scenery on your layout. So definitely, you know, give it a shot. Give it a whirl. Build one of these, right? And you know, maybe you can get one of those little micro cameras to go ahead and fit inside this some way and actually make this camera a real camera. I mean, that's a cool idea. I've, I've, I've got to go see if I can find one of these to give it a whirl because I think it would be really cool to have one of these cameras actually work. <laughs> kind of cool. Now, <clears throat> there we go, right? So if you like this video, like it, share it with others, and please subscribe to my channel. And, yes, and we also have the Facebook group and the Instagram group, Buy Me a Coffee app, and we have the Patreon group. So come over, check those things out as well. 
And like I said, we have new t-shirt, the Boone Slot Car t-shirt. Keep it in the slot. That one right there. Plus we have the other one, the original t-shirt, the Let's Do This t-shirt right there. And we have a coffee cup, which is right there. And all that stuff can be found at Conquest Lair. Those guys right there, which is Raul's site. So, a <sighs> lot of stuff, right? So, there we go. And again, thank you to everyone that subscribes to the channel and takes part in all this different stuff and leaves me comments. I really, really appreciate it. And it is fun, right? Because we're out here, we're playing with slot cars, and we're just, you know, just getting in touch with your inner eight year old is really fun sometimes. So, there we go. Now, Next time on Boone Slot Car Garage, yeah, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do yet. So, but I'll figure it out. When I figure it out, I'll let you guys know. All right? So, I'll see you guys later. Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this.